I'm going to read a scripture I've been meditating upon this evening. It is in 2 Corinthians chapter 4. I will start with 17 and 18. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Eternal weight of glory. While we look not on the things which are seen, but the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Praise the Lord. The men we are following. The, the men you are following in scriptures they lifted their eyes from the things which are seen they focused on the unseen in the world of the unseen there are so many things there are so many things that God has prepared for us but they dwell in the unseen world in the unseen world there is your blessing in the unseen world there is your victory in the unseen world there is everything that you desire in the unseen world there is power praise the Lord Paul says taking our eyes away from the unseen from some of the things that we see weaken us you may be sick you look at yourself in a mirror and you've lost weight and then you end up being discouraged but Paul was teaching us to take away our focus from the seeing things that we see. We look on the things that are unseen because they are eternal. God has gathered up so many things and has put them in the unseen world. But it is unto me to go into the unseen world to pick what I need that it may manifest in the world that I see. Praise the Lord. Going into the unseen world, I pick what people cannot see and I make it manifest in the world which is seen. When Hannah was barren, she went into the world of God of the unseen but Hannah was seeing a child in the unseen world and called that child and God brought the child in the physical praise the Lord now I encourage you as we are seeking the Lord there is a world where we can go to and you put everything that you need amen because when you look on the physical they, they are temporal they, are, they have limits. The world of the unseen is eternal. In the spiritual world, we pull the blessing, and that blessing will bring life. That blessing will bring money. That blessing will bring peace. That blessing will bring rest. And it comes with so many other packages. Many people, when you are seeking for a blessing, we are looking for a blessing, especially in terms of money. But a complete blessing comes and it supersedes money. It has long life. Praise the Lord. It has peace. It has joy. It also has rest. That is the blessing that God gives. In the, in the spiritual world is where our rest dwells. Many people are looking for rest. But you cannot rest in your life when your rest has not come from the spirit. The Bible speaks in the Genesis that the world was 
was mixed up but the Holy Spirit was hovering we can call the Spirit of the Lord as the grace which was hovering upon the mixed world the world was mixed up but when the Holy Spirit hovered there was peace in the world. Praise the Lord. When we enter into understanding the, the spiritual world, we understand that God is unseen. And we learn to go to seek the God who is unseen that God will manifest in the things that we see on earth. The more you dig, the Bible says deep, deep calls unto deep. God starts manifesting in the physical and you start touching him. Praise the Lord. When you read in the book of Luke chapter 5, these men were fishing the entire night. When Jesus showed up the following day, he told them, after he had used their boat, he told them, now what you can do, you should launch into the deep. They went into the deep. In the spiritual world, Jesus was seeing that in the depth of the sea there was fish. But in the physical world, there was no fish. They were, they were fishing in the same place. And these were experienced fishermen. They fished the entire night. Now we who used to stay on the, low, on the, on the lake, they catch the fish in the night and when there is extreme darkness when there is a lot of light let's say the moon is lighting it is you get little fish and there is a, a slang we used to use that I went on the lake and I and I stripped myself it, meaning literally meaning I did not get anything in the night when you, you let down your nets and there is a lot of darkness you catch a lot of fish because the, the fish normally walks in the shallow waters when the moon is lighting they can see the net as it is moving it can see the net and it runs away but when this Jesus met with these men after teaching them in his world of the unseen there was a lot of fish praise the Lord and after teaching he told them launch into the deep Jesus did not teach in the night he was teaching during day but in the spiritual world there was a lot of fish in the lake we must learn to dig into the spiritual world in the spiritual world is where your faith is in the spiritual world is where your hope is hope the bible teaches that when you hope on the things that you are seeing that is not hope the but the more you have hope you can attract so many things and they come closer to you because you have hope hope will make you wake up in the morning and you go to work not knowing where your customer who is going to come on your shop is coming from praise the Lord hope will make you wake up in the morning you go and sow not knowing what you are sowing will come out in which way so in hope is in what you cannot see and yet hope is very important unto a Christian the Bible 
ye yalinga ayimiride ku nyanja egenesereti nala ba mata abiri ngagali ku nyanja na yaba vubibali bagavudde munga bayoza emigonjo jawe na abasaba ko eliato elimu eliali ya simoni na mugama anti okulisa amugamba okulisa embeza ya katono okuva kutale na tula na igiriza ebibina muliato and it came to pass that he was that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Gennesaret. He saw two sheep standing by the lake, but the fishermen were gone out of them and were, and were washing their nets. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would thrust it a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. Now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, Launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a, cut, for a drought. Simon nadamu na agama, te umuami, tu wateganyo kukeso ude na ye, ni tuta kwa sachintu, na ye urechi gambo cho, na sule migonjo. And Simon answering said unto him, Master, we have toiled all the night, we have taken nothing, nevertheless at thy word I will let down the net. And when they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes, and their net broke. Praise the Lord. These men, after Jesus had used their boat, in the night when the sun was shining, in the day when the sun was shining in Jesus' world which has the unseen but, but having so many things there was a lot of fish we can compare it in our day to day life God can tell you go to your place of work where you work every day and he tells you you are going to pick money from there and you will tell him we are in a situation we are in an economic collapse people don't have money but God is saying that is where I'm seeing your money today. He may have mobilized so many people on that particular day to be seeing your shop. Now here Jesus had already attracted the fish and had drawn them near to where these men were. In the physical world, you may be discouraged. You may not if you are discouraged, you may not go back to let down your nets. But in the spiritual world, where there is eternity, when you go back and go to the same place where God has told you to go, you will pick your blessing from there. Because the unseen are eternal and last forever. You may fish from the same place year after year and whenever you go you find their fish. And by the time they realize during the day they caught a lot of fish. They had to call their friends who are in another ship to come and help them. They came and they filled up both ship and even the ship wanted to see. But when Simon Peter saw, he bowed down at the feet of Jesus and said, leave me alone for I am a man who has sinned. When we continue sowing in the unseen with hope, there is still our blessing which is still hiding there. When you consider only the things that you are seeing, you have cried and you have failed to get something. And then you start judging comparing with the day to day life you will end up not praying you will end up not having faith in God and yet God still has a lot in the unseen praise the Lord God still has everything that you need the spiritual world is still filled up with so many things 
It is unto to us to open our eyes and look into the spiritual world. Looking at the world which is filled with riches. Looking at the world which is filled with the blessing. Men, there are two men. Abraham and Lot. Lot looked unto the world which was physical. When they were separating. Because Abraham told him, look and choose wherever you want. He used the physical eyes. And looked. He saw a, a, a country which was like Eden. According to his understanding, he saw he had the garden of Eden. But he did not know that the world he was looking at as Eden was having Gomorrah and Sodom. But Abraham, who was looking at the unseen, focusing on the unseen with his eyes, God opened his eyes and showed him a country. The country of Abraham was not as fertile as Lot is, but it had peace and the blessing. Praise the Lord. With the born again, let us focus on the unseen. Because, because when we focus on the, on the physical things, they will get over. The unseen are eternal, you will dig and they will never come to an end. Praise the Lord. We tell people, ask for a blessing, don't ask for money. You say, God bless me. Because a blessing supersedes money. A blessing is something you cannot see. But it will draw to you everything you need. It brings favor, it brings acceptance, it brings peace. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Friends, as we are continuing in the days of seeking the Lord, may we pray that God will enable us to break through and we enter into the unseen which has all our wealth, the unseen which has all our long life. Someone can meet you and ask where you get your strength. That makes you think that tomorrow you will have something to eat. But you know your strength is coming from the faith which is unseen that God has given you that is encouraged that tomorrow you get something to eat. Praise the Lord. Wanda was listening to someone preaching. And he said that God hides everyone's blessing somewhere. So where he has hidden your blessing is where you start scratching. He may have hidden your blessing at your workplace. There is somewhere God will always keep your provision. Some of your provision is hidden in digging. So faith and hope within us is what takes you and you get a hole and you start digging. The more you sow, you sow beans, you sow maize and other things. The more you sow, you are sowing by faith. You are sowing by hope. And as you are there, God will get the blessing through your garden. And then you realize people coming to buy your products and they are, not, they are giving you a lot of money. But how will you get all those things? When you, act, when you believe God, you go and you saw, not knowing what is going to come out, but you've gone by faith. Praise the Lord. That is why the Bible says faith is the evidence of things hoped for. Because faith because faith is a spiritual thing but it is the power which makes you wake up in the morning to God's work. 
and it causes you to be going to work every day. In Romans chapter 8, verses 24, how does it say here? Romans 8, 24 says, for we were saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why does he yet hope for? Praise the Lord. We pray by hope. We seek God by hope. We are walking in righteousness by hope. The moment hope dies in you, prayer will die. But I pray saying God is going to do this also. In the spiritual world, I know God has everything that I need in my life. my visit heaven. A man wrote a book, a book which he called Nachari the Guru. He came and testified. And said, I saw people praying. They were praying for the lamb. As they were praying for the lamb, God sent an angel and took him to the store. And the store had legs. The store had hands. The store had everything. In the physical, it was not tangible, but in the spiritual, in the hands were there. Someone saw the angel carrying legs and taking them. In the unseen world, there are legs for people. An angel carried legs and put them on someone's feet and someone started walking with the born again we need to lift up our faith we stop judging the world on the, according to the physical but let us say in the unseen world there is our blessing in the unseen world there is our life there is our healing there are houses we need to be having praise the Lord and when he said that I said wow when I saw when I see the pastor in Lubaga making people walk, it is the angel carrying the legs. Praise the Lord. The moment you lift your eyes and you look on the unseen, you are like the man Elisha. When Elisha was with his servant, when they had they were attacked. The, he saw a mighty army and he was shivering. As the legs were shaking, Elisha was not afraid. And he said, God, open the servant's eyes that he may see the spiritual world, that he may see the, uh, the army of angels. In the unseen world, there are angels protecting us. But it is unto us to look unto the spiritual world that it manifests in our physical life. That it manifests in our physical life. And when it manifests, people will see it. Because when the man saw the, the armor of angels on, on chariots of fire, I believe even the walking style changed. He walked boasting around, knowing I have the protection of heaven. There is a supernatural power that I have. I am special. Born again in the unseen world, you are special. In the unseen world, you are you are, you are big. It is unto you to continue calling upon the unseen world. That God will cause the things you've never seen with your eyes to manifest. The Bible says what we have never seen with our eyes is what God has prepared for us. Why don't we attract them in our prayers and we say, God, I call what I have never seen? 
seen with my eyes. Because what you are seeing with your eyes is temporal. But what you are not seeing with your eyes is eternal. Praise the Lord. Our hope is in the God who is unseen. But he has a lot of power. I invite you today. When I invite him to Danda, I say the God who is unseen is mighty. If God can use the snow or the thunderstorm to be a, a weapon of warfare. He has so many weapons of warfare. He can use thunder. He can use this, the rainstones. Praise the Lord. In the unseen world, you can jump and fly in the air. You may not have had dreams that I dream. We used, we used to see men who are mightier than us chasing us in dreams, but when they are drawing near to you, you fly. Praise the Lord. In the spiritual world, I even fly in the air. Praise the Lord. One day I had a dream and I also woke up posting around and I told my wife it was special. Praise the Lord. The, we, many times we pray and we say fire but that time in the dream I prayed fire and I saw fire coming out of me in the spiritual world there is everything that you need but again I want to make you raise up that you embrace your God God is going to send everything that you need praise the Lord it was Daniel who was praying. That when he started praying. That God sent his angel to come. The angel is in the spiritual world. Daniel could not see him. Amen. Praise the Lord. The more he prayed. God kept on seeing Daniel praying. And yet God had already sent the answer. That is when he asks, is the angel still on the way? I believe the angel which I don't know went and told God he has not yet arrived. And then he said what you should do. Send Michael. The Michael went. Praise the Lord. He found that the angel God had sent was arrested. He fought for him and made him cross over. And the angel crossed over and wrote an answer to Daniel. In the unseen world they are battles fighting for you. They are people fighting for you. The more you trust in it, you wake up and call upon God in the morning. And you call him in the afternoon and in the evening. There are some things God is going to open to reveal. Praise the Lord. Because in the unseen world is where our hope dwells. Praise the Lord. The hope which is seen is not hope. But the hope which is unseen is hope indeed. Praise the Lord. This man told us to take away our eyes from the things that we see. Because the things we see will scare us. Because you wake up in the morning, you go and work, and you end up not earning even a single coin. Then you wake up and go back the following day, you don't get anything. That is when you start saying, No, I, let me quit working. But I would have said, Go and inquire of God where your blessing is. When he says your blessing is there, you can sit in the same place. Second Corinthians 5, 7 says, For we walk, 
Second Corinthians 5, 7, it says, For we walk by faith, not by sight. Tukumomoyo, kuba, elachino, chetusingo kwa gala, mukama yebazwe. We are confident and say, and willing rather to be, praise the Lord. Mukama yebazwe. Praise the Lord. We walk by faith, not by sight. I pray by faith. I know my God has everything. My God has everything. You may be looking at, a, let's say, chicken. And you desire to eat a chicken. And then you pray to God for chicken. And you say, God, I need chicken. Chicken will get over. You'll eat it and it will be over. But you can ask something greater than chicken. Amen. Amen. And say, God, what I need. If I may embrace you. If I may touch you and you be with me. And I walk with you. Chicken will start chasing you if you walk with God. Praise the Lord. They will look for you. You will eat them as long as you're walking with God. You may think and say, God, I wish you'd do for me this. Because you are walking with your God. You have created a relationship with him. And then God will disturb someone to bring for you what you desire. Let us not ask for small things. Let us seek for the mighty and things. Let us seek for the completeness, the fullness of God in us. Because all other things he will fix them. Amen. He will fix everything when you ask for just one thing. We read, for, we read about a man Solomon. God asked him, ask for what you want. Truthfully speaking, if you come here, the landlord has already abused you and God asks you for what you want, you will ask for a house. If you are a sister and you are single and people are mocking you, when are you getting married? When are you getting married? And God asks you, what you want, you will say, God, now that I've seen you, I need a husband. Next, uh, Solomon. But Solomon was a wise man. He asked for something that made God give him everything. Now I am telling you today when we embrace God God is going to bring everything. I am encouraging you who is seeking the Lord who has given his life to God may we take away our eyes from the small things there are people who have mercy upon God I have seen lawyers who are having mercy upon God they say go you, you disturb God a lot you can imagine you are crying another one is crying another one is crying what do you want God to do the God I know or oh, the God I believe. Even if the whole world woke up the same day, same hour, and prayed the same hour, God can answer them the same hour. Even if they say at 9 a.m. we are going to wake up and the whole world is going to pray, God will answer the whole world. In the unseen world, there is eternity of everything. When they give you three houses, can you sleep in them at the same time? If you have three cars, can you drive them at the same time? When God drops a miracle at the same time, 
he has not come to an end because God is eternal let us continue seeking the eternal God let us trust him because he is still able to do everything some of you say I have prayed a lot I have prayed a lot I have prayed a lot but the Bible says the people who remind God do not cease to pray keep reminding him in the unseen world there is everything Solomon asked for wisdom he got the blessing he got everything that he desired and when he gave Solomon everything all other people also had what they needed Solomon did not empty the heavens when you see others having possessions you can also possess them our God has eternal riches our God has eternal blessings our God has eternal peace our God has eternal healing everything that he has is eternal so it is unto us the born again to know who our God is that you go to a God when you understand who he is the one who makes the parents to produce he still has children praise the Lord why are you seeking the Lord today I want you to look at a big and mighty God who dwells in eternity Paul reaches a time and says I want to know you I want to know Christ that I may know his height the breadth, the width and the power of his resurrection that I may test it and touch it but even though he desired but he could, he could not finish everything when you go deep in God you will end somewhere you will come and praise yourself that I have reached somewhere when you have also ended somewhere because everybody will end somewhere everyone will measure the, me the unit we have come on a dining where everyone can measure what they want you come and serve yourself you will say God I want to take you away from other people but even if you desire you will not take him away from us he is so broad praise the Lord you can stream from there stream from there another one will stream from there and you tell him your everything he is eternal praise the Lord what he has is eternal his love is eternal God can pour unto you grace upon your life and you will be asking yourself are the other people dwelling in the same world I dwell you feel as if you are in a special world amen amen now I want us to wake up and we pray I want you to stop seeing God as a small God in his eternity there is everything Jacob crossed over to Laban's home with the only estate but in Laban's home there was the flocks of Jacob by the time he came back he had flocks praise the Lord men are entering into Kampala when they don't have money but in Kampala there is a lot of money money is moving around you just don't see it even in Mokon every house has money there is when God will start up and then every, house, every, every money in the house will come to your direction and then people in every house what you need is in my place and you have to carry your money to me when God revealed unto Joseph wisdom in, in Egypt all the wealth of the nations came to Egypt praise the Lord that God can still do something and people will be coming to your direction 
they will come to your and direction. Before when you are still young, there was a lie which came, I think it was in Zimbabwe. And they say they have risen up a woman who heals AIDS. <laughs> he gives people soil and they get healed. People ran to Zimbabwe. I believe God had changed the channel. If that woman was asking for money, every person would carry whatsoever she needed. God can do anything. He is not limited. Let us look unto the God who sits in eternity, who speaks and everything will happen. He spoke and everything came into existence. Why don't we trust unto Him who speaks and things happen? And He is more than able. There are some things I have seen, but Paul reached a time and said, I don't want to appear as if I'm boasting. But Paul had seen certain things in God. And he knew that his God was doing mighty things. And he said, Let me speak of a man who went to the third heavens. And he saw things which are un unlawful to utter. When Paul is writing, speaking about the breadth of God, speaking about the bigness of God, when he's writing and saying, I don't look upon the physical, I think he reached heaven and said, Wow, look at the gold. Look at the silver. Say Paul, Paul uh, I am walking without clothing, but my God has everything. Your father has everything. Praise the Lord. Your father has everything. Stand up on your feet. Stand up on your feet. I want you to lift up your faith. Lift up your faith today. As if you have never prayed before. And you pray to this God. At least let him open your eyes to see the length and the breadth. The God who showed up on the, on the lake. When the sea was before the children of Israel. They were crying and shedding tears. They saw Pharaoh was pursuing them. But while they were still crying, God told Moses, strike the sea.